Paul Joseph Watson. Paul Joseph Watson, the editor in large at InfoWars. I was watching his video recently on why the media hates PewDiePie, and I felt like I could offer an alternative perspective to his, or a rebuttal to some of his thesis, as I feel like I'm in a unique uh, point of view sitting here in the middle of New York City media, having worked at half of these media companies, he quotes, and you know, I also have tweets from PewDiePie too, buddy. <laughs> he gave me a kissy face. But the first question I really have, you know, for Paul Joseph Watson is, is he sincere? That's what I really wonder. When I was watching the video, what I wondered most was, is what he's saying, is he sincere about, or is he saying it because he knows he'll get traffic and views? Is he pandering? So, if you're watching this, Paul Joseph Watson, are you sincere? To quote the uh, great philosopher Matthew Healy, sincerity is scary. But so why do they hate PewDiePie, right? Why do they hate PewDiePie? But so why do they hate PewDiePie? Why do they hate PewDiePie? Well, first, who is they? To quote another great philosopher, John Green, the truth resists simplicity. And there is no they, really. You know, I know the people at Vice. I know the people at BuzzFeed. I know the people at Huffington Post. I know the people at Now This. There's no great cabal of liberalism sitting there thinking about how they can crush, you know, alternative media or bring down PewDiePie or how they're sitting there scared that PewDiePie, who is a massive creator and reaches a, a wide audience, is somehow offering alternative viewpoints that they don't like. It's just not going on. Nobody's thinking about that. The people at these companies are thinking about how the heck do we monetize our content? How the heck do we make profitability? How the heck do we make you know the venture back capital that we've raised go further? That's what they're thinking about. They're not thinking about PewDiePie. Now, individual journalists may enter in and have their opinions on PewDiePie, but I also think a lot of it is that because PewDiePie is such a big creator, he's just going to generate traffic. And for the individual journalist that wants to generate traffic for their articles, if PewDiePie says anything remotely controversial, they're going to try to hop on it. And because most journalists, I can just tell you, their media consumption habits are not from YouTube, they don't understand YouTube very well. They haven't watched that many PewDiePie videos. So if he says something controversial, they'll pick up on that, and then they'll look through a back bunch of videos and try to find a narrative, and then quickly write the post. Um, that's about it. And then they'll get a bunch of traffic and feel good about it for the week, and their boss will pat them on the back like, heck yeah, you brought in a lot of traffic. That's basically what goes on. It's not as dark and cynical and nefarious as Paul Joseph Watson makes it out to be. It's just not, there's not some cabal there. So I think we can just dismiss the they as kind of a straw man. Now, I grant you, sometimes, you know, digital media can seem like a monolithic entity and that they can kind of seem like they're all promoting the same viewpoints. But I think it's unfair to, you know, lump in perhaps Mike, which is now bankrupt, and now this news, with Mother Jones and The Atlantic, right? Or Axios. These are vastly different digital media companies. And within these digital media companies, every media company has vastly different journalists operating within it. Some with, you know, conservative viewpoints and some with liberal viewpoints. Now, does the media, digital media, tend to skew liberal? Yes, but that's just because the general makeup of the employees are liberal, not because it's top down. So, no, the media doesn't hate PewDiePie. The media sees PewDiePie as a good source of traffic for their own sites. And in fact, if PewDiePie were to go away, they would lose traffic. In some ways, digital media companies have an economic incentive for PewDiePie to remain on top, so they can continue to write articles about him that'll gain traction and traffic and bring in money, right? It's not always a political lens, you know. To quote another great philosopher, John Green, the truth resists simplicity. And often, life is multifactorial. There are political lenses, but also economic lenses and cultural lenses that everything filters through. And to divide, you know, the reason why they dislike PewDiePie is because he's some sort of alternative viewpoint, I just don't see it in my day to day. Now that's anecdotal, of course, but I sit here in New York and I know most of the people at these media companies. The second half of his video addresses why mainstream media companies are failing and why they're laying off journalists because they've leaned into liberal media and this is a niche audience and now, you know, they're failing because they're fake news. I don't think that's true. I think what they've leaned into is hiring a lot of journalists that are interested in niche things that often make products, let's just call it what it is, products, videos or articles or reports about things that don't reach a broad audience or don't appeal to a broad audience. And when you don't appeal to a broad enough audience, whether you're making cars or you're making journalism, 
you just don't sell enough products because you don't reach enough of a broad audience and therefore your company has to scale back. It's less to do with political and more to do with just niche products. You know, there's just less of a consumer base for LGBTQ content, however you may feel about it, than there is for, let's say, investigative journalism. Now, is this political? No, it's just that there happens to be a smaller demographic for LGBTQ content than investigative journalism. And therefore, there's not the audience to support an LGBTQ team. It's much more monetary than political. Anyway, those are just some thoughts for you guys uh, this morning. Click around if you want to watch another video. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.